Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, praise the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your word, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for everything said, given, and done in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we come to you this morning, and I pray, Lord, that your word will go forth, Lord, with power, with the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that souls will be revived from this moment forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, today's topic is revival, which means a renewed zeal to worship and to obey God. A renewed zeal, a resuscitation, making something active or vigorous again. And, and, and when I looked at that, I was, I was reminded of my sourdough starter. And how that all I need to do is put some fresh water and some fresh uh, flour and stir it up in the sourdough. And, and Lord God, that starter will reactivate itself. Yes. And that is what um, I, I'm not going to talk about that. That's not where I'm going to be at this morning. But uh, that was the thought that I had when I was coming to the lesson. And I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not kidding you. That was the thought that I had about the, um, the sourdough starter. But today I want to read you a song. Um, Revive us again. Uh, renew them again unto repentance. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. And as a matter of fact, let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6, okay? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. And the word of the Lord reads as this. Let me get to him here. All right, hold on for a few moments here. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6 says this. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. All right, let's just write that down. Hebrews 6 and 6. But the song says this, We praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled. Oh, glory to God. With fire from above. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. And that the words was by William Pay, excuse me, William P. McKay, and the music by John Husband. And usually we say, hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. And then I saw here, um, on page 349, um, Revive Us Again was on page 348. But on 349, it says, send a great revival in my soul. And that's the words and the music is by B.B. McKinney. B.B. McKinney. All right. And this was copyrighted in 1925. And the scripture of choice was Psalm 138 and verse 7, where it says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, Thou wilt, thou wilt revive me. 
Send a, re send a great revival in my soul. Send a great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control and, and send a great revival in my soul. And I think I have heard that song before. I'm not sure, but I think it's like, send a great revival in my soul. Send a great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control and send a great revival in my soul. Now, I don't know that. That's just what I came up with now. So I hope and pray that's the words, that's the, the tune for it. But if it ain't, um, those of you that know the song, go ahead and sing it today and get a blessing from it today. In Psalm 138, that was verse 7, it says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Revival. Let's get into the lesson today because God has given us some great um, um, scripture for today. And, and, and I like, I didn't even see um, 138 and 7 uh, while I was studying as a pot potential scripture, but thank the Lord he gave it to us. Resuscitation, making something new, uh, excuse me, active or vigorous again. And I'm reminded of the fact that we hold church services, church revivals, as a matter of fact. Sometimes it's, it's only a a day or a weekend long, and sometimes it's a week long, and sometimes it's even longer than that. And they say we need a revival, not only to revive our spirits, to increase our faith, but we need a revival to gather in the people in the community to come and hear the preaching and the teaching of the word. Yes, revival, to renew the zeal, to worship God again to honor God, to obey God, to repent of our sins and to be saved again, all right? In Psalm 73, the word of the Lord reads here in verse two and three, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And I wrote down when we take our attention off of God and place it on the actions of the world, we can slip. Do you hear me? We can slip up and fall. We can get so battered and bruised, not because we are jealous at them. All right. But it's like, man, yeah, we get a little yeah, envious and jealousy. It's not like we want to be like them, but it's like, God, they seem to be having all kinds of blessings and miracles. Lord, how come we can't have that? Look at what they got, Lord. How come I'm struggling over here? Lord, look at them. They able to go and buy and buy and buy. Lord, why am I over here living paycheck to paycheck and sometimes having to put things back, all right? Because I can't, uh, I can't afford certain things. Yeah, yeah, we do. We look at things. I ain't gonna lie to you. We look. Yes, we do. We look. Y'all know we do. We look at stuff like that. And we can tell the Lord, Lord, how is it that they able to have these things and, and we can? Lord, I'm your child. What's what's wrong with me having such and such? And, and y'all know we do that. We do that. And so I thought about Peter. Here, Peter in chapter 14 of Matthew. And I started out here. All right. Verse 22 through verses 23. I mean, 33. And I said, Peter saw Jesus walking on the water during the storm. All right. All right. 14. This is the, I'm going to read just a little bit of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. But then who knows after I get started reading. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to be and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Okay? Now, here 
the Lord has taken um, five loaves and two fishes and blessed it, breaked it, and gave to the multitude. And after the people, after he breaked it and blessed it and gave to the disciples to feed the multitude with the five loaves and the two fish, all right, the word of the Lord says that they took up of the fragments, 12 baskets full, right? 12 basket full, right? And it says here in verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. There's the words of a song, I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses, you know, and 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 here the Lord Jesus Christ is alone up there in the mountain praying, right? But the ship is out on the water, and it says here in verse twenty-four that the ship was on being tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And by this time, it says the. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus began to start walking on the water toward them. He getting ready to go on to the other side. He's just going to walk. The storm is still going on, the word of the Lord, as you read on down there. And they thought while they were in the ship and they trying to battle for their lives, they see the Lord walking on the water. They get scared because they think that it's a ghost. They, they you know. And they were troubled saying, it's a spirit. And they are crying out in fear. The Lord had to let them know, don't be, be of good cheer. It's me. Don't be afraid. So Peter in his boldness decides this. Now this is, here Peter is in verse 28. Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. So what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? Come. Peter got out the boat and began to walk on the water. Now, what was happening with the waves? The word says that the waves was being tossed and the wind was boisterous, right? The wind was contrary, in other words. Jesus was still standing there in light, in, in eyesight of Peter. He told Peter to come. He didn't say, Peter, look all around. He said, Peter, come. Now, Peter should have been looking at where he was going, not watching what was down on his feet, but looking where he was going. And he didn't. He started looking at the wind and got afraid and began to sink. Had sense enough to say, <laughs> Lord, save me. He had sense enough to do that now. He had sense enough for him to cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. What happened? Jesus stretched forth his hand and, and grabbed him. But he did. He said, oh, thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Peter needs a revival, don't he? But since the Lord was able to save Peter's life from drowning, to me, Robin, okay, from the book of Robin, I would have been happy and rejoicing right then and there. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for saving me. Everybody on the boat should have been praising God, in which they did. They began to praise God for, for, for the Lord saving them out of that storm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're talking about revival, right? He knew who Jesus was. Even when he was able to ask the Lord, you know, Lord, can I come? And the Lord said, come. But he turned his attention off of the Lord. And see, that's I guess that's the, the thing that got me in Psalm 73. I almost slipped. Why? Because my attention was not on God. I wasn't focused on God. I was looking at the prosperity of everybody else. Mm -hmm. Peter here he took his attention off of the one that told him to, you can walk on this, this water. He took his attention off of the Lord, saints of God, and began to sink. 
and got afraid and hollered out, Lord, save me. To me, all the disciples, there shouldn't have been a doubt in their mind at all as to who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what he can and will do for them. That should have been a revival of, I don't have no doubt. I know the Lord's going to bring me out. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? I must be in the singing mood today. I don't feel good. That's the reason why usually I sing when I ain't feeling good, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ain't that sad? Lord, save me. That's what we should be saying on a day-by-day -day basis. I put down talking about Peter now. And then I wrote the word, but, B-U-T, but, in Matthew chapter 26. Now, what happened in Matthew 14? Jesus told Peter, you can come on and walk on the water. Peter walked for a while until he started, he took his eyes off the Lord. What happened? Lord, save me. The Lord saved him, all the people in the boat took them over on the other side and began to be a blessing to the people on the other side of, the, of that water. But Matthew chapter 26, verse 17, but he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. Thou was with Jesus Christ of, Gal of Galilee. You was with Jesus, weren't you? Of Galilee. I don't know what you're talking about. Verse 72. Again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Why? They said, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. I do not know with an oath. In other words, man, I swear. Mm. I declare, I affirm. Like I used to say, I, man, I swanny. I don't know where, where I got that from. I swanny, man. I Verse 74, then began him he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. They said unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thy speech be wearieth or betray thee. He began not only to swear, but he began to curse. I don't know y'all talking about. I do not know this man. A revival. A revival. When you get to the point where you begin to deny the Lord. When you get to the point where you start swearing and cursing again. When you get to the point where you are so weak in your faith that you begin to start looking at everything else but keeping your eyes on God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, if, if. Even in verse 13, he's, the, the word of God start off with if. By the time you get to verse 14 again, he starts off the, the sentence, if. The Lord's letting you know, I can send calamity at any time. What he said here in verse 13 of Second Chronicles, <laughs> I can shut up the heaven, no rain. I can command locusts to devour the land. I can send a pestilence among my people. I can do all kinds of things what the Lord said, if I so choose. But the thing that the Lord says, but if my people. Now, what does he want them to do? He wants them to humble themselves, pray and seek his face, not somebody else's face. Stop chanting with your beads, clanging your bells, bowing to your statues. If you can make your God, then you should be your, you should be the God. If you make your God, if you buy your God, you should be the God. Why are you going to buy your God? Bow down to your God. Huh? Why are you going to do that? When we have a God in heaven that is capable of shutting up heaven that there don't be no rain. Commanding his locust, his caterpillar, his canker worm, his palmer worm to come here and do all kinds of damage to your crops. You don't have no crops. You ain't got nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. If he don't allow it to rain, you ain't got no water to drink. All your groundwater eventually is going to dry up. 
You can go to the ocean all you want, but you ain't going to get all the salt out that water. The snow on the mountain will melt. Especially if he sends a pestilence in the land, poisoning up everything, diseasing everything. Ah, oh, if he does that. But if we humble ourselves before the Lord, if we seek his face, if we pray to him, if we would turn from our wicked ways, are you listening to what the Lord's word is saying? Then he's going to hear from heaven. Then he's going to forgive us. Then he will heal our land. Yeah. If there are always reasons why God allows life to happen. Life is going to happen. Good things and bad things. Life and death. Yeah. Life is going to happen, but he still desires us to obey him and to have no other God other than him. And let's go back here in Deuteronomy chapter five. Look at verses six through nine here. Deuteronomy five, verse six. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, he says. Thou shall have no other gods before me. No, you can't. Do not. I won't allow you, okay? Do not have no other gods before the Lord thy God. He says, thou shall not make thee, there you go, make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry, I've been eating um, turmeric. That's the reason why my tongue is discolored, just in case you were looking and asking. Mm. We make graven images and we pray to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this right here. If this is your God, I feel sorry for you. This right here can't do nothing but stay where you put it. You put it in your hand. That's all it can do. If you don't click it, and use the ink that is in the barrel. It ain't going to save your soul. It's not going to heal you. It's not going to deliver you. Now, somebody might say, well, you can use the barrel just in case you can't breathe. And they stick a hole in your neck and you, okay, still ain't your God. What he said here, verse nine says, thou shall not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. If, if you decide there's somebody else better than the Lord, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. In Psalm 34, let's go to Psalm 34, thanks to God. In Psalm chapter 34, verse uh, 6 through 8, let's see what it says. Psalm 34, verse 6 says this, This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. What are we talking about? Revival. Being renewed, refreshed, resuscitated, made vigorous all over again. He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord did what saved him out of all his trouble. It says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You trust in the Lord, that means you're going to pray. You're going to seek his face. You're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to humble yourself. You're going to fear the Lord with a reverence fear. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Look at verse 14 through 19. It says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to continue in your sin. Why? Because you cried out to the one who can answer your prayer, and that is the Lord. It says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. 
The face of the Lord is against them that do evil <clears throat> to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Bless the name of the Lord. Excuse me, please. Mm. <clears throat> <Ooh. clears throat> the fight is still on, saints of God, and I plan to win. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. A revival is when you go to God opened. Lord, here I am. You ain't going there boasting, proud, arrogant. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, you're not. <laughs> As my cousin says, what you're not going to do. <laughs> That's what you're not going to do. You're not going to go to God and think that you're going to boss him around. I told God and he did such and such. How many times have we heard that story? I told the Lord this, and, and, and God did what I told him. Woo, ain't that something? I guess you the type of person that would tell God, give me the winning ticket to the mega million lottery. I guess you that type of a person, right? Uh-huh, yeah, you told the Lord. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Mm -hmm. and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Yeah, okay. What you saying here, Robin Brooks? A broken heart, a contrite spirit is not boastful and proud. That's what I'm saying. I got the big boy today. Let me see what the big boy says here. Chapter 34. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Hmm, what it says here. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's what the New American Version says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the Lord is near. Verse 18. NIV, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Glory, crushed. The Lord is close to those who are of a broken heart and saves such as are crushed with sorrow for sin and are humbly and thoroughly penitent. You know that was an amplified version there. Mm-hmm. What you saying, Sister Brooks? I'm saying you ain't going to God boasting. No. To fear the Lord and to cry out to him. What are you doing? You're confessing to the Lord, right? Excuse me. You're confessing and you're praying to the Lord. In 1 John, let's go here. In 1 John chapter 1. I wrote down Brother Doug Downs' name, the late Brother Doug Downs. I want y'all to, I want y'all to, when y'all think of 1 John chapter 1, and when y'all start reading verses 5 through 10, you would say, you know what, that's what Sister Brooks said that Brother Doug Downs used to talk about all the time. And he did. He did that a lot. Verse uh, 8 is where I'm at here in uh, 1 John, okay? Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's Brother Downs, he would say that thing. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm telling you, you can have a revival any time of the day, any time, any place. All right. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So what do we do? We confess our sins. We confess we should be godly sorrowful. Lord, I'm sorry that I have done these, these wicked things. I've said this, this, this wickedness. Lord, forgive me of my wicked state. Mm -hmm. That's what you should be doing. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 through 11 reads as this. Now I rejoice not 
that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance, for you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. When you repent, God hears your repentance. Excuse me. He hears your repentance. You're telling the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Mm -hmm. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. When you are repenting and you're sorrowful, asking God for his deliverance, for his healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the sorrow of the world work of death. I said, you know what? I got to see what the Amplified Version says about that. But I went on. For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. I'm Lord, I'm sorry toward you. I ain't sorry toward the world. I'm sorry toward you. It says, what carefulness is wrought in you. Yea, what a clearing of yourself. Lord, I'm coming to you for cleansing, for clarity of mind, for salvation, for deliverance. Yea, what indignation. I'm sick and tired of this mess that I've been going through here in sin. He says, yea, what fear. Lord, I don't want you to say depart from me. I don't know you. Yea, what vehement desire. My desire, Lord is to be with you. I desire that you take away this sinfulness of my flesh, this lust of my flesh. I desire you more than I desire the world, Lord God, because I realize that without you, I will fail. Yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things, you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. So I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to go to the Amplified Version and read that because that was too good. He says here, yet I am glad now. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. I'm glad now. He says, not because you were hurt and made sorry. Because see, Paul, what he did, he went and wrote a letter to these folks. There were some things y'all are doing that y'all don't need to be doing according to the word of God. So I need to write it out so that you will hear it, see it, and stop doing it. Repent of it. He says, uh, you may sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance and you turned back to God, for you felt a grief such as God meant for you to feel so that you might not suffer loss in anything on our account. He said, for godly sorrow, that is in accord with the will of God, produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. You see that? But worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe, produces death. Mm, boy, that's sad. For you can look back and see what an earnestness and authentic concern this godly sorrow has produced in you. What vindication of yourselves against the charges that you tolerate sin? What indignation at sin? What fear of offending God? Oh, Lord. What longing for righteousness and justice? What passion to do what is right? What readiness to punish those who sin and those who tolerate sin. At every point, you have proved yourselves to be innocent in the matter. Mm. I tell you that, Lord, he got a way of, of, of getting to you, don't he? Yes, he does. And this is what we are looking at when we are doing everything in our power not to sin to get revived back, to get renewed back to where we need to be in the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I, I went to verse 15 where it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
See, there's something about a revival. A revival not only revives your soul and gives you a little pep in your step, but it also encourages you to read the word of God, to study his word, to get what you need from God through his word. He says, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto you more ungodliness. You got some people that's got all kinds of cute little sayings, right? And and you just, oh, that is so spiritual. Oh, that is so powerful. Well, yeah, let them read the word of God and stop all this vain foolishness. He says here in verse 19, he said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Okay. You can stand on this. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Mm. And if you don't allow yourself the opportunity mm -hmm, to be revived again, since you start looking at what's going on in the world and getting yourself all worked up about it. Okay, I better leave a lot of stuff alone. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from evil. Now that's what verse 19 says. Then, um, I'm still in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, 21 and 22. Now he's in your business. What he says in verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared for what? Every good work. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times we're so busy doing the things that we, ooh, I, we're just a touchy-feely type people. You're going to touch and feel your way into hell. And hell is going to empty out those that's within it into the lake of fire. And then hell itself is going to go into the lake of fire. Read Revelations 20. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go to 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Revival refreshes, regenerates, renews you, ah, invigorates you, empowers you. And then verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. A lot of times when you don't read the word of God, you don't realize that you are being bamboozled by what they say, shun profane and vain Babylons. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even realize that the person ain't doing. <laughs> we got some people. I remember one, one year, I, a young girl. I was a young girl and I was working in the hospital. And uh, this lady, she was just so happy. And she said to me, uh, about knowing the Lord and speaking in tongues. And, and I said, oh, yes, I've, I've spoken in tongues before. And she says, oh, isn't it beautiful? She says, I can just do it all day long. And she just went to rattling off. Blah, 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 blah. And I just stood and looked at her and she was like, come on, let's speak in tongues. And I was like, you got to be in the spirit. I, yeah, wait a minute now. Wow. If you can force tongues, you good. But anyway, that's 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 that was just a side note. I digress. He says here that you may recover yourself out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. See, when you remember when I when I was telling you about Psalm 23, 73, right? How that the he said, I almost slipped because I was looking at the world. Here you are listening to vain and stuff. You listening to stuff other than reading and studying the word of God for yourself. You go to church, you don't take your Bible. And if you do take your Bible, you never open it. You don't even have a notebook with you to write down notes. I'm telling you, when somebody's preaching or teaching to me, I have my book with me. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I'm writing down some, some, some things that you may have said. 
I do that with my own teaching. I make notes on my own paper after I am teaching as well. Okay. Study the word of God. Study and know. I better write that down. And know. Y'all remember I said I take notes? And usually I, I, I take notes and, and, and do it in different colors. Right? Study and know who God is. You had to know him for yourself. I went to Romans chapter 12. Verse 1 says this. All right. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Y'all probably have already started reciting the rest of it. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service right? Excuse me. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How can you do that when you don't open up the word of God? When you don't open up the word of God and study for yourself, how can you do that? Huh? Huh? How can you do that? How can you renew your mind if you don't go to where the revival is? You can have a revival in your own home and sitting at your desk at the coffee, you know, at the coffee, drinking a cup of coffee at, at you know, kitchen table, sitting by the coffee table. But if you yapping on the phone about this, that and the other thing, or if you're sitting there watching sensual, sensual, um, provocative television programs where you are constantly <clears throat> the censors have common sense to bleep out the words and here you are filling in the blanks see i'm talking about robin maybe I, you know because i could talk about robin i know robin so when when i start filling in the blanks i i get up and, and I'm, I'm gone click turn tv some something else Look at a cooking show. Look at a sewing show. Do, do something else. Be creative. Learn how to do something. Renew and overcome evil with good. Look at verse 21. Still here in uh, Romans 12. Be not overcome of evil. Don't let evil just take you over. That's why you, if you need a revival, now's the time to get into your word, into your prayer closet. It says, but overcome evil with good. Do the things that's good and right in God's sight. Don't be going around looking at everything. Know whose child you are. Know his, your Savior's voice. Know his voice and do what he's telling you to do. All right. Let's go here to Romans chapter 13 then. What does verse 14 tell you to do? Now we talk, like I said, we talk about reviving, right? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. With our eyes, we look at things and we want it, right? We want it. I want that, Lord, and I ain't gonna stop until I get it. Yeah, you go on with that. Good luck with that, as Phil uh, hold, hold, Holder. That's Phil's nasty name, Holden. Anyway, Phil would say, good luck with that. In Acts chapter 9, verse 5. Acts chapter 9, verse 5. And he said, who art thou, Lord? Here is Saul of Tarsus going down. <laughs> he is going down to a certain journey. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's on his way. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Uh -huh. The Lord let him know. And then he told him, it is hard for thee to kick against the prick, Saul. You want to know who I am? And he trembling, Saul was trembling and astonished, saying, Lord, what will you have me to do? That's what a revival is all about. When God gets your attention, huh? He and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. This scripture here, verse 7, was a scripture that I didn't understand, but to me it was exciting. 
And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. For some reason, that was just exciting to me. And I, I, I was like, oh, that's my scripture. And Saul arose from the earth, and when he, his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three nights, excuse me, three days without sight. And neither did he eat nor drink. Sometimes a revival will cause you <laughs> to go on a fast. <laughs> yeah. Go on on that fast and pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God will cause you to, you, you, you'll stop eating now. And then finally, my final scripture to you is coming from the 17th um, uh, chapter of, of Proverbs. Verse 22. A merry heart. That's what happens when you have a good revival and you know you've been revived, refreshed, renewed. A merry heart doth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. Um, B.B. Winings, along with Korean song, says, soul rather, Korean soul. Um, some Korean guys that sing in English. Um, Laughter does good, just like a medicine. And I said, now I got to find that scripture. A merry heart. Be happy knowing that the Lord has revived your soul. I pray that this lesson has touched your soul this morning, this afternoon, this night. Whenever you're listening to it, I pray that God has touched your soul and that you will have received what the Lord wants you to receive from it. All right? All right. This is your missionary, Sister Robin Brooks. Peace be unto you. God bless you. Laughter does.